Welcome to another Business Spotlight, where we share insights, reflections, and pearls of wisdom from local business leaders. My name is Kerry James. I'm a coach and a facilitator. And today I'm delighted to welcome uh, Steve Kuntsevich. And uh, Steve is a partner at Glazers, but also more specifically head of digital creative and marketing, not necessarily in that order, uh, but welcome. Good morning to you and great to have you on, Steve. Good morning, Kerry. Delighted to be with you. Excellent. So let's get stuck straight in, if we may, please, Steve. Please sure. give us an overview. How long has the business been going and what sort of areas do you specialise in, please? So we're a, a commercial law firm that does all the usual things a commercial law firm does. Uh, part of the ETL group, which is a global professional services network. Glaciers has been around for the best part of 50 years or so. Um, very much a fixture on the Manchester legal scene. But over the course of the last four or five years, we've been in the middle of a period of, of pretty exponential growth. Uh, the business has changed a great deal. And I think the message that we're giving to the market at the minute is that we, we're we really coming out swinging. We've had a lot of new people join the business over the course of the last year or so, me being one of them. And um, yeah, we're about to make a, a move to a new office that I'm sure we'll talk talk about as, as the conversation moves on. Uh, but we deal with uh, commercial work, corporate work, employment, uh, dispute resolution, uh, private clients, so wills, trust and um, probate, um, all the usual stuff that you'd uh, expect from a law firm, but with some really good sector expertise as well. And so what were you doing before you joined Glazers then, please, Steve? Uh, I was part of a global law firm, uh, Clyde & Co., and then joined Glaciers in February this year. Okay, so it's interesting to hear that you've been growing so rapidly uh, by the sound of it, and, and clearly we've been through some interesting times, some interesting you know, quotation in the marks. Yeah, like. in the Japanese sense of the, of the word, yeah, I think so. So uh, since COVID, with um, you know, inflation, interest rates, hybrid working, the digital revolution, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, how have all those environmental trends and dynamics, do you think, affected your industry and your business? Uh, firstly, Steve, and if I might ask a little kind of follow up to that link to your previous answer, what do you think has driven the growth at, uh, at Glaciers? What's driven the growth at Glaciers is a, a number of different voices around the table. So growth real. I mean, Glaciers has always been, as I say, a fixture in the, in the Manchester commercial legal uh, sector um etl uh, bought a stake in glaciers about five years ago when a new management team came in led by my partner david jones and um, david's very entrepreneurial he encourages that across the um across the team and ever since then it's been moving away from the firm that it was the firm that we want it to be and i think we very much get into the stage where this is the firm that we want it to be um we uh we're very lucky to have a wider management team that led the firm, obviously this is before my time, but led the firm very effectively through the challenge of COVID in particular and through the current financial situation in the UK. Um, so it's it's not a history that I've been part of. It's one that I've got to know over the course of the last six months or so. But in terms of the legal sector, I, I wish I could tell you that we're absolutely unique and we face specific challenges. We face a lot of the challenges that our clients have faced. Um, I remember when COVID first hit, and because I work with an awful lot of agencies, um, their first worry was, well, we've got a load of clients cancelling work. You know, we, we've got a lot of people pumping the brakes on activity that we were looking at. And what do we do about it? Our contracts now void. How are we going to keep open? How do we get people back into the office? Um, I think, you know, we, we, we're three years, three and a bit years on now. And I think what COVID's done for a lot of my clients is prove exactly how resilient they are. Because if you work in the marketing or creative sector, and um, that was a huge part of the recovery for an awful lot of people when they were all stuck at home. Digital marketing all of a sudden became one of the most valuable skill sets in the world. Um, as far as the legal sector goes, um, I, it's always a challenge making sure that you're working with the younger members of the team, developing them properly when you're not all in the office together. Um, but I think really COVID has sort of torn away the fig leaf of everybody having to be in the office together every single day. And what we found is we say to the team, we're going to make sure that we are all together on these days. And other than that, as long as you get the work done, as long as we've got effective communication, how you do it really is is up to you. We we, we try and be as enabling as possible. Um, 
given the fact that certainly again for a lot of the young members of the team um, their expectations have changed beyond all measure on top of that you've got client expectations I think when everybody was at home during lockdown uh, clients were delighted because they assumed they'd get a, a reply from you 24-7 because you had nothing else to do with your time so I, I think as, from a, a client expectation point of view that's evolved over time, uh, but also that brings pressure on uh, on the well-being side of things. We need to make sure that there's good work-life balance within the team at the same time as making sure our clients get the service they deserve. And that, that that's an ongoing talking point. I think every law firm struggles with that, to be honest. So you mentioned uh, commercial is clearly an important part of the business in your uh, sector in particular. What sort hmm. of percentage of your business would be SMEs? Um, most of it. Right. Uh, we, we we have for a really um, we have for a really eclectic client base, but ETL's vision in particular, the larger ETL's group, is very much geared towards SMEs, and I think you know, the term SME can be a little bit reductive in that it actually covers the vast majority of businesses in the UK. Um, we can act for bigger businesses than that. We've got multinational clients you know, of all different shapes and sizes, um, but we are very very used to working with the owner managed business sector and the SME sector. So what might be an ideal client for you then within that sector, you know, maybe going a little bit deeper in terms of their culture or their way of working or what might be a, the perfect client for you, would you say, Steve? Um, the per, I'm, I'm lucky I, I have a couple of my perfect clients, um, one of which is an agency that I've worked with for the best part of 10 years, um, who most days will give me a call and say, we're going to do this. Are we going to get sued by name of big brand? You know, no two days are exactly the same. Um, I love working with the agency sector. I'm a failed creative. I wish I had talent and get to work with people that do. Um, and I every now and again, I get to be part of a piece of work that you can say you had a very, very tiny influence upon and you see how successful that can be. You can be, really be part of the alchemy of that. Um, again, we like working with owner, owner managers. Um, it's a sector it's a mindset that we know pretty well um but equally you know when working with some of the bigger clients we you get to help them move the needle on the risk that they're trying to manage and uh you be able to say that you had a little bit of a hand in that so um it, it's it's more for me personally it's more about working with the sector rather than working with you know, it's, it's nice to have a business that appreciates the need for some kind of compliance structure that they will need legals every now and again but equally you know, I, I don't think that we're the most important part of, of a conversation that happens with that business. It's helpful that we are part of that conversation, but we shouldn't necessarily be leading it unless, say, there's a, a dispute that we need to take charge on. What we do has to deliver value to the kind of clients that we work with. And normally that means that we've, we've got to be every bit as commercially focused as much as we are legally. OK, so you, it sounds like you're um, you mentioned you're taking new people on and you're, you're growing rapidly. What what? You know, with that comes its own challenges, of course. So what would you say are the main challenges to Glazier today, given where you are now and where you're intending to move towards? I think it's maintaining the values that we've been able to set over the course of the last few years. Um, obviously, when you bring new people in, they've got different experience. Me being one of them, my partner, Danny Barney, who leads our corporate team, being another with whom I've worked for the best part of a decade. Um, but I, I've, what I found coming into the firm is that it, it's a really welcoming environment. Um, underpinned by a set of values. We're a set of core values, actually, that we're rolling out across the business at the minute and a firm that really looks after people. Um, on the one hand, there's a great benefit to having other voices around that table, bringing their own experience from other firms and helping the firm grow. Um, but there's a kind of a stick of rock set of values around treating people fairly, around having some shared ambition with our clients, well, all of our shared ambition with our clients, being realistic about things that have absolutely run through my time here so far you know in the, in the seven months i've been here and um, I've, I've been i've become part of the team really quickly and I've, and I've seen other people do the same well it's great to hear you've got such uh well embedded uh values you know quite a chunk of the work i do is to help clients crystallize their values but most importantly embedded them which which is often the bigger challenge so that's great, uh, great to hear, Steve. So, what about aspirations then for Glaciers? Where where would you like to see? What do you think the key changes are over the next, say, say three to five years? 
Well, Manchester is the, the centre of, of what we do, but I think we'd be, we've would be we recently opened up an office in Liverpool, led by my partner, Adrian Rogers, um, a corporate lawyer, a fantastic corporate lawyer in the same way that Danny is. Um, we'd like to have an office in most of the major cities in the UK. And we are pretty acquisitive as far as that goes. We're looking at a number of opportunities at the moment. But Manchester is very, very much the centre of gravity of the firm. Uh, Liverpool's a really, really exciting opportunity. Um, yeah, we are right in the middle of the commercial district there and we're already winning some really significant instructions in Liverpool. So we are growing, uh, we are growing organically, uh, we're, but we're also growing opportunistically as well where the need, where the opportunity presents itself. Okay, and what about um, what about advice for business owners about getting the most out of the relationship with a company like Glazier's? Well, what what advice or thoughts might you might you be happy to share, Steve. You mean in terms of how they engage with us, or yeah, how they operate to to make the most of your services and the most of um, your advice? It's hard to answer that without seeming massively self-serving, right? Um, but I'm going to do my best, and I'm going to fail nobly, <laughs> no doubt. Um, it, delivering that, so very few people go to a lawyer when they're happy, and. I think part of that comes from maybe a lack of transparency in terms of how we bill, um, a lack of clarity around when bills are going to be raised. But, but you know, cost is only one aspect of all of this. I think um, law firms struggle sometimes in that when you present your advice to a client, you give them five choices and say, pick one, as opposed to saying, this is the one I think you should be going for. This is the option. You know, these are the risks, but this is this is the way you, we think you should approach this particular issue. Um uh, having an open and honest relationship with, with any kind of professional advisor is really important, but that works both ways. You know, you, you being able to feeling like you can challenge the advice that's been given you and challenge the advice you're giving is really, really important. Um, but, you know, lawyers aren't out to get you. You pick the right one and with a bit of luck, they become the mythical trusted advisor that hopefully stays with you for a, a pretty long time and that you build a relationship over a number of years with. A lot of what we do is transactional um, and we appreciate that. You know, sometimes it, it, you know, legal services are a bit of a distressed purchase, um, but we don't work that way. We, we always, we're we always interested in building a relationship over a longer period of time. Um, lawyers will tell you that more generally, but it's certainly always the way that I've worked and it's the way I've always seen Glacier's work since I've been here. Very good, good, good advice. And what about your, well, your reflections as as a business leader now? Then, Steve, what 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 would you say that the top two or three lessons you've learned along your career, and and what advice might you give to new business owners starting up their business? Um, the biggest lesson, and it, it it's I think it's a really good way of turning imposter syndrome into something a bit more positive, is that you are never the finished article. Um, you will never get to the stage where you know everything. Um, there is only so much you can do alone and you need to have people around you that challenge you every single day and that are smarter than you more 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 than anything else uh, you know in, in law we've always got to make sure that we're on on top of changes in legislation or in changes of you know, in, um, in changing case law um but there's always something new there is always something new to learn and to me complacency is is the biggest. Uh, enemy when you're looking to in any way be successful in any area of life mm. health healthy paranoia um, <laughs> yeah can, exactly can be useful but it's interesting i was listening to a podcast the other day and uh, the person was making the point about how they see imposter syndrome as a, as a good guide to what they should lean into and what they should uh, attend to so it's interesting you make that point steve well, it's been uh, it's been a pleasure hearing your your story and where you're up to with with the business, Steve. One final question, if I may: um, any announcements or um, invitations or offers that you'd like to make to viewers of, of Business Spotlight, please? No, absolutely. I mean, invitations, offers. We'll have plenty of things to invite people to when we move office. Um, we are moving office a week on Friday uh, from St James's Square into Springfields. And there's going to be an awful lot of uh, press uh, activity around that. It's We are really, really excited about it. Uh, it's kind of planted a flag within the commercial districts in Manchester where a lot of the law firms are. And it's a move that's really indicative of our ambition. Um, it's going to be great for our staff. It's going to be great for our clients. And it's it, it's a natural next step in terms of our evolution 
uh, we we're really really pleased about it and um as i said to you when we were talking before part of the reason that this background is blurred is that we're right in the middle of the office move and there are boxes everywhere so i'm going to leave this conversation and, and go and get my personal effects into a small plastic box in um in anticipation but there will be you'll see news in, in most of the usual outlets about it we're going to be um i'm sure we're going to be doing some events to uh, to get clients in to see the space as well and uh watch this space i suppose the best thing to say very good. Well, we'll certainly add the URL to the uh, the post linked to this uh, video. Uh, and once again, Steve, thanks ever so much for your time and your input. All the very best with the office move and more generally, all the very best uh, with Glaziers. And to you, Kerry. Thanks very much for the opportunity. It's been a pleasure. All the best. Bye for now. Thank you.